good, everybody? How y'all doing out there? This is uh, Kelby, your boy. Right now, we are doing a video episode of the Dope Sessions podcast. Now, everybody knows, usually, I'm always by myself when I do this, but these five episodes that I want to do is basically just me bringing on somebody else so we can chop it up and we can just talk about anything, any and everything. And I got my boy, my brother, my brethren, one of the coolest niggas on the planet. Woo! Uh, <laughs> Um, the legendary drunken monkey with three <laughs> E's, so don't fucking forget that. <laughs> Woo! What, up? what up, drunk? Yo, 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 yo! What's up in this bitch? No, I'm <laughs> Love, peace, and big booty care bears. Pterodactyl flavor swishes. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> having me brother thank you g oh no problem bro i'm i'm glad i'm glad that you wanted to do this man i'm like i'm humble first of all um before we get into anything i want to i want to talk about now i hadn't heard the, the the latest project that you just put out but I I, I, no pain i pay no pain that's the one i haven't heard yet and the reason why i haven't heard that one yet is because i am stuck on mbaku like, <laughs> dude, Mbaku is so fucking hard, B. Like, shit is so hard. <laughs> I was like, man, like, I, so, we all know, so, so we, we all know Mbaku is uh, the, one of the characters from Black Panther. Um, and yeah. you, be, you being a, a comic book geek and everything, just kind of, huh? You see it like uh, it's Marvel oh, yeah, to the yeah yeah, yeah bro. Now, and I'm talking, I'm talking Calvin. It, it got so much to me embracing the comic book and anime culture that I'm I'm in my I call it my Super Saiyan mode where like you know I'm rocking the blueberry purple beard. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm really becoming a walking anime comic book, yo. Yeah, man. All nothing for us you know what i'm saying so i appreciate you throwing that out there yo man no no doubt man no doubt and i'm i that's the reason why like the uh the, the latest album that you dropped i haven't really listened to it because i've just been stuck on mbaku man like and i'm like i i love that project so what what made you want to bring these these projects on you know what, bro, with this whole situation going on with the corona, man-made virus, or however you want to put it, and me, like, 2019, it was just a whole bunch of death around me where a lot of people was dying. I just recently lost my uncle, and I come from a very musical family. And you know what? I guess I started going through, like, a little trauma where I was like, you know, tomorrow ain't promise. And I got over a thousand songs, like over in the history of Drunken Monkey doing it for like 22 years. I got so much music out here that I didn't put out. And I was trying to do it all strategic where I'm like, oh, I want to do it the right way. And then some just came over me. It was like a holy divine spirit where I was meditating. I was praying and I was like, God, what could I do to be able to assist people with everything going on with this coronavirus, how can I be like some type of joy to the people? And God spoke, he was like, put out everything. Put out everything, put out all your music because I don't consider the music that I do hip hop. Even though that's my element, I consider my style of hip hop I do is more Reiki hop because it's healing in my music. Like. I never been shy of talking about stuff, uh, opening my life up in my music. So, you know, I was like, I want to do something different. So marketing and promotion always been different to me. And like, what's so crazy, the uh, the, the the cover for M'Baku, I've been had that. I've been had that with another album. And I was just like, you know what? I want to put all this shit out. I got all these album covers, all these art pictures. So fuck it. I'm about to flip the game and just put out, re-put out this album under a different title. And like, you know, it was a point where I was getting ready to change my name to M'Baku. 
because in Baku and like you said, the comic books, like that mean like man, a hey, man gorilla. I still want to stand a drunken monkey lane, but I'm like, fuck, I'm not gonna change my name to drunken from drunken monkey to Mbaku because that's monumental. I'm like, I'd rather just be DJ Mbaku for my DJ name. And I was like, I'm gonna put out a hard ass project that's just hard, drunken monkey bars, wildness, crazy. And I'm gonna call it Mbaku and G and like, what's so crazy? A lot of the songs on the Mbaku is like, damn, they're like seven to 10 years old. Mm. And you, you know, know what? The, the, the reason why I, I really wanted to kind of focus on what you were just saying about how you put this project together. Um, going back to like, like, I remember like you kept telling me like, dog, it's time. Like you need to start putting out, you need to start putting out music. You need to start putting out music, it's time. And like, I kept saying like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm hopefully man, but I don't know. Like, and I was that one that was like, well, the right situation gotta be this and the right situation gotta be that. And then um, I think it took me moving to Chicago because the the my my brother that I work with on Black Cinema, Lenny Virgo, uh, me and him have been trying to get something together for like five years straight, and yeah. and it took me being in Chicago, and I just think like one day I was just like, you know what, man? I, and I sent him a letter. I sent him. I wrote him a text, and I said, um, because and then I like I started thinking about the whole gang, Gangstar last album and how like Premier was just crafting beats over Guru's vocals. And, yeah. I, and I just started sending Lenny all these vocals. Like I just started, I was like rapping, I like, was using this like crappy mic, but I was just rapping my vocals and I would send it to him. And then he just went from there, started crafting beats. And then once we got everything together, we was like, okay, it's, it's good. But because of the, the the way the the mic is sounding, like we gotta we gotta make this great. We gotta we gotta have this sounding great on all levels. So I really get what you're saying about like when when God is telling you like yo it's it's really time. You've been you like you've been wanting to do this. It's really time. You gotta start. You gotta listen to that voice of God. And like and God says, okay, it's time. You just gotta hit it out there, man. I I think. You know, everybody don't know. There's a lot of people who know Drunken Monkey and what you've done in Chicago hip hop. But I don't think a lot of people know how me and you know each other. <laughs> Before he became Drunken Monkey, I knew him as Joseph. Cause me and him went to school together. We went to high school together. Class of 98, like, yeah, I'm gonna be real, like, and what's so crazy, I was just talking to Kevin, Kevin Mackey, as well as Chris Mason, and I was like, bro, it was only three hip hop, and you know what, I, it was four, I gotta put four, that I knew of, that at the time, once being in high school, I was all about No Limit, you yeah. know, I respected mm -hmm. hip hop. But, like, I was the dude in my hood that everybody came to for music. And, like, at that time, everything, it was just no limit. Mystical, fiend, you know what I'm saying? A whole Master P movement. And, like, that was sweeping Calumet off his toes. And, like, you had four hip-hop heads in a school. And it was, like, a million of us. But it was, like, four hip-hop heads. And we considered them nerds because they was different. They was on their backpack. That was Calvin, that was you, Kevin, Chris, and Zach. You know what I'm saying? I was like the hip hop heads. And the day that changed for me was when we had that monumental battle in the lunchroom. Cause I used to battle everybody and I wasn't battling as myself. I was battling as mystical, yeah. like voice. And like, yo, here go Calvin sitting at the lunch table. All the football players, we in the back. Calvin came back there and joined the cypher. And I don't even know what happened where we started battling because it was just rapping. And then I think everybody, because you came up, 
And your flow was so precise. It was so clean. It was on point that everybody was like, damn, this is different. Oh, shit, Joe, he coming at you. Yeah. So then I, looked at, I got upset, and I'm like, nigga, what the fuck but I remember you went and you was killing and you was like, got these MCs swinging on these nuts. And I got, <laughs> I got mad. I ain't gonna lie. I was on my Papa Doc shit. <laughs> and I got mad and a nigga just fucking just fucking threw the mashed potatoes on your new shirt and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what the, the, the funny thing is? It's like it, what you were saying is absolutely true. It was really only four of us, like hip hop heads, at Cal you met. And what makes it like really, I don't even think you know this either. That was the first time that I showed everybody that I could rap. Wow. Because, like, it was like I, I knew I could rap, but I think at the time I wasn't as confident in it as I am now. Um, and so I think once it was just kind of like everybody was kind of at that table doing a thing, then it was like, yeah, I joined in and kind of just started doing. And like you said, I don't know how from everybody it became me and you at that precise moment, but it was just like, it was like, for some reason, it was just like, I had this thing where it's like, I do stuff for fun. Like, and that, that's, that's, that's just me. But it's like, if somebody like quit the challenge, then it's like, I'm not gonna run away from it. And so that was the first time, like, I think I ever like battled somebody. Yeah, that was lit, that was, yeah, that was dope. Isaiah, that was some Isaiah Thomas shit that you pulled, G. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, from from Calumet. So let's let's go from like from Calumet, from that battle part from Calumet. How did the transformation to Drunken Monkey come about? Man, so I never forget it. Like um, man, G, like like I said, I come from a very musical family, and where all music played. And like me growing up in Inglewood, I embodied the hood and culture. But at the same time, I always knew what good music was. It was always a seed inside of me that was waiting to hatch. My junior year of high school, I was playing football. And my best friend, uh, Byron, a.k.a. Tweet, he was like, yo, in order to be a great running back, you need to work on your footwork so you should get into African dancing. Mm. So I was like, man, what the fuck? I don't do no damn African dancing and shit. And he was like, yo, we get changed. We it work on your footwork and we get the change with the females. And I was like, okay, nigga, all right, I'm all about it. <laughs> Not knowing that my African dance teacher was a world-renowned, like, famous dance teacher on some Alvin Ailey, Judith Jameson, Josephine Baker shit. I didn't know my dance teacher, uh, Af uh, Miss Darlene Blackburn, shout out to her, was like international like she was. Mm. I got African dancing, bro, and it was like something was unlocked. Something was unlocked inside of me and which was like the performance side of Drunken Monkey. Because the music, and I I've been rapping Ever since I was a kid, like, doing a little tape deck, like, push record. I still remember my first rap. I've been rapping since I was, like, one years old, you know? Yeah. But the performance side, like, getting with Miss Miss Blackburn, that opened me up to, like, going outside the hood, going to perform at Purdue College, going from Purdue College to going outside of Inglewood, going downtown, like... Seeing all this shit, it opened my head up and I always been a cat to be like a, a loner that love to be around people. And I just started taking trips up north. I just started really checking for shit and then I started coming across like WHBK. I started coming across like Third Rail Radio. You know, I started finding out about the Chicago scene because even though, like I said, I always was about music, you know, 
I was about crucial conflict. I was about big nasty. I was about drama ward. I was about psycho drama. Mm -hmm. And like getting out of high school, I started finding out about the hip hop side of Chicago with like the the Nacrobats, the ill nature, mm -hmm. the the break dancing crew. And so happened, like I end up going to like East West University. My best friend, the same person that told me to get into African dance and was like, yo, you need to transfer to Triton. I transferred to Triton my sophomore year. I ended up coming across like my crew member, uh, Pyro, who was a part of Ill Nature at the time. This man took me under his belt, started showing me how to do rhyme patterns like Buster Rhymes, then our crew just took our crew just came together. And I mean, this is it's a long ass story. And like just after high school, it was like God just made everything there, you know, to to make me drunk and monkey. Like me going into Chinatown with my sister. Cause at the time, I mean, I know I'm all over the place, like, but it, it all comes together. Cause then like it was like a Voltron of how drunk and monkey came together. Mm. You know, going to try to really get the exposed to hip hop Chicago. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people thought Hip Hop Chicago was just Wild Hunters with the Big Nasty, or Juke Music, or either like West Side with Psycho Drama and et cetera. But then it was like a whole nother culture where it was like backpacking and all that shit. Mm. So going from Trident, hanging with my crew members, starting to learn the elements about ciphering, b-boyism and all that shit. I grabbed that shit real hard. I took that shit Real sis, I'm talking about so sis that the next week I got kicked out of my crib, started living with my friends, backpacking on the colleges, started going to like different ciphers, battling people, you know, and then like we always, each crew member that was in my crew, we all was in college from Loyola to DePaul to like, Man, Columbia, and then that's when we, we was ahead of our own, like, student black union. So we started creating our own open mics within these city, within, like, the city, different areas. My auntie, she had an oil and incense shop that was on 55th. And at the time, you couldn't come on the Chicago poetry scene and be a hip-hop head doing hip-hop. You was a hip-hop head doing poetry. We changed that vibration. You know what I mean? And like, man, G, me coming, uh, to make a long story short, if it weren't for Darlene Blackburn, if it weren't for 360, if it weren't for Py Pyro, if it wasn't for a hottie, Essence of Life, Some Like It Black, those are the ingredients that hatch the seed in me that was already meant to blossom into Drunk and Monkey. So what made Drunk and Monkey was just being out of my hood going and seeing something that was different out of the norm, not being in the box, not just coming from school, going back to Inglewood, like my family and their music history, like it's a long story. Like, so I just sum it up to like, that's what made Drunk and Monkey, right. especially growing up, being into martial art movies, like Shaw Brothers, Samurai Sat Sundays and Samurai Saturdays. I'm talking about when Kung Fu movies was part of Cartoon Saturdays on Fox, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, and then I start getting older. I start getting older, start finding about knowledge itself, start really getting into where I come from, my ancestors, Shaka Zulu, and then you know, I start finding about the ancestors of entertainment from Saint, from Frank Zappa, Jimi Hendrix, mm -hmm. Fela Kuti, um... You know, I, yo, you believe it or not, I love the fuck out of Jim Morrison, the lead singer from The Doors. Mm -hmm. All the ingredients are just embodying that, just end up becoming drunk and monkey. I appreciate about you is that although, like, because I remember there was a point where we hadn't talked, like, after high school and all this other stuff. But once like we connected on Facebook, it was just kind of like a we came back being cool again. Cause that and that was and a lot that's the one thing I will say about me and you as as friends. Like we had hip hop, hip hop in, in, in common, and we also had Kung Fu movies in common. 
And I remember yeah. that that in high school, we used to talk about kung fu movies all the time, bro. Like, oh but, yeah. But the the one thing that I will say ab about you that like humbles me is is the fact that you have been one of my many supporters and everything that I've everything that I've I've done from like we do movies to to um to to doing this to doing uh black cinema like when when we came out with with our single thoughts you were the first person I was like yo you gotta hear it you gotta hear it. you were the first person and you you were hitting me up talking about how how dope it was how much you loved it like you was posting it uh, on on, uh, on Facebook and stuff like and like that that's why I I I always will just like and anytime I needed advice one especially when I was doing uh, uh, the Black History Film showcasing when I was living in Paducah like you were the first person I, I I talked to because I was just like you you were in this like you have years in this and I was just like yo like I just need some advice. And no matter what, you have always been there. Like, seriously, like you've always been there. And I love you for that, bro. And man, I appreciate you and I love you. And I admit, like, you know, when I came in the Chicago hip hop game, it was more harder than what it is now. Like, I come from that era where you had older industry execs like man you dope as hell and then you be like man could you show me how to get on and niggas like no nah, nigga you gotta go through it the hard way you gotta struggle you gotta be homeless you gotta do this and i was like yo one day i never forget i was like one day i'm gonna go i'm gonna become one of the illest performers that the city has ever seen i didn't know what i was saying that day but like i always been a very vengeful person like Growing up, you know, I was the kid that got bullied on. I was the kid that niggas was like, yo fat ass, I roasted me. So I always had like a people's chat mentality and shit. Mm -hmm. Where I didn't want people to go through what I went through. Like, you know, from your chance the rapper to the cool kids, all of these people, they kind of stem from open mics that I hosted. You know what I'm saying? And I never wanted to be like the elders that I grew up around where they was like, nigga, you talented, you dope as fuck, but I'm going to stop right there. And I thank God for them because in their mind, it was like tough love, like you got to go through this, you got to go through that, you got to go through this. And that's what made me how I am, where I'm big on like, you got to let people know what they are, man. It's a million motherfuckers that want to do what we do. And everybody want to feel like they dope. When you roll to the thoughts, me knowing you as a friend, I listened as a friend, but at the same time, I admired it as a music lover. Because it's like, I know this dude, I know his story, I know it's like, damn, this is hitting home. But then the music lover in me, that's what made me like, yo, this shit remind me of some vast air, this shit remind me of some Mad Lib, MF Doom shit on some motherfucking... You know what I'm saying? It's like dope as hell. Like I never been a type of like hip hop head that listen for bars. Anybody could have bars. Right. Never been a type that's just like bars, 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 bars. That shit get boring after a while. I'm all I'm more about content. I'm more about how you riding that beat. You know, I come, you know, how I was trained, my seafood of lyricism, shout out to Pyro. He made me study Buster Rhymes. He made me study Jay Diller. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, the way Buster Rhymes was riding beats, nobody was doing that. Jay, and then the way that Jay Diller was on some, I come from the hood, I love big booty strippers, but my music is still musical. Mm. That showed me something. So I just, I'm just big on paying homage. I'm just big on treating people like I want to be treated. I'm just big on, like, Yo, I'm going to listen to your shit. If I don't like it, I'm going to let you know I don't like it. If that wow. shit is cool, I'm going to go hard. And that's like the reasons why I did the Tweet Central Lounge radio where I play local and independent artists because there's so much music out here that I feel like 
the mainstream don't really focus on these type of people. They don't focus on your Calvin Wilsons. They don't focus on your drunken monkey. Or it's like just because a motherfucker don't have like a million views and shit that mean this person music is trash that mean this person music video don't get to be seen like no fuck right. that i'm a, that's why i'm big on digging and if i find something i like i'm gonna let that person know like yo you dope as fuck right. and like that, that black cinema album i can't say it wasn't what i expected but that shit was beautiful as fuck you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I think the Black Cinema album is basically like therapy and like a breakup album. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, you, it's like, I feel like I know where all them verses, where everything is coming from. So that's what made me appreciate MCs more. Like, you could be the softest nigga in the world and spinning hardcore bars and shit. Right. That don't do that. You know what I'm saying? That... That shit just don't feel right to me. You know what I'm saying? Man, but you know what, man? Um, just one last thing, and then we gonna get up out of here. Um, so the last thing I wanted to have you talk about is for like the next, like I think like you hit something on the head. Like back in the day, everybody was, you know, trying to, trying to uh, do like a, you know, get on, get on, you know, try to get on the record label. Like you were talking about with, with, with Rockets, everybody wants to get up on Rockets. So like, uh, and now we're, we're in a sense of like, we don't really need the labels anymore. Like, what would you say to an artist that's still just like, man, I just want to be signed. I just want to be signed. Do you think they should still pursue, try to sign to a label or just be like, man, just do it on, I'm just going to do this on my own. How do you, you know, what, what do you feel about that? You know, I'm always about independent. I'm always about independent, being independent. You know, I used to roast, I used to roast everybody that want to be signed, but who am I to tell somebody with a vision what they should and what they shouldn't do? You know, some people don't want to do that. Some people don't want to be independent. Some people want people to tell them what to do, how to do it, when to do it. Some people need that. Some people need that industry. What I would tell these young brothers and sisters, pay attention. Pay attention to the business. Whether you signed or if you not signed. Just like how I'm saying now to every nigga that put their shit on Facebook. Then what? Okay, you put that shit on Bandcamp. Now what? Mm. Now you put that shit on Facebook. Now what? What's the end goal here? Where are we trying to go with this? Like me, I want to be independent, but my goal is to get an international global distribution deal. Mm. I would love a distribution deal. Why? Because that's just, that's just, yo, that's me and that person meeting halfway. This is what I'm bringing to the table. This is what I need you to bring to the table. Right. I don't have, I don't have time to do a lot of thousands print up of CDs uh, being on every social media site. That's why motherfuckers, and this is what I will say, that's why the industry, you still still need certain representations of the industry. You still need a PR person. You still need a, a publicist. You still need certain things. You still need a, a industry upper hand, whether you go through the industry. Some people go to school to do these jobs. That's what they're for. Like now, you know, I I find myself like, even though I didn't done all this shit 20 years, I don't have the clientele right now to be able to pick up the phone and be like, yo, this is my artist. Did it is. That's what that PR person for. That's what that publicist is for. You know what I'm saying? So to a young artist that's getting ready to get on, I would tell him to research and focus on his business because it's easy to write a rap. Any motherfucker could write a rap, but what separates you is your business. That's the jeopardy here. That's why we still got Snoop Dogg. That's why Red Man, Jay Z. You know what did Jay Z do? He did it independently with uh, Rockefeller, and then he kept leveling up. 
But as you see, it was still some type of industry presence. Mm -hmm. You still need that. You still need to get your ass out of the house and go to these events and network. You still need to put up that dough and go to South by Southwest and go to a uh, all these different conferences. You still need the network. So you still need some type of form and representation of an industry presence to push you. You know what I mean? So, like I said, if you want to be signed, be signed. If you want to be independent, be independent. You know what I'm saying? It's a headache when you do this. Doing and shit I think that's the difference with our generation versus the younger generation where niggas are so quick to roast the younger generation because basically you can't humble yourself to be like, hey, how you do this? Right. And the older generation and the younger generation can't humble themselves to be like, damn, G, I got all this, but motherfuckers ain't fucking with my music like that. What are you doing? So I feel it's something that we both can learn from each other, but like business is everything, man. Yeah. Business is everything. And but yo, man, first of all, I do want to thank you again for chopping it up with me. On the first Dope Sessions video episode, man, I thank you again. I appreciate it. Yo, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Drunken Monkey. Woo! Yo, real quick, shout out to my sponsor on my end. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Raw Papers for yeah. sponsoring this powerful, dope, informational session. You know what I'm saying? Dope sessions with my dude, Calvin Wilson, also known as Mr. Herbal T, these bitches. Also known <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave. That's the only thing that about the album that disappointed me, bro. What, no Herbal T? I thought that Herbal T was going to be on that, bro. Like, <laughs> bro, I love that shit, bro. Like, man, like, and I'm going to say this, man. I'm working my ass off right now to do something so big, not just with the music, with the radio station, with the podcast, with my comic book festivals, with all my events to like really take the independent and local scene to the next level, bro. Like mm -hmm. I'm talking about, we need to start doing like artists, independent and local artist unions and shit like, that's where my mind is at now. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Where motherfuckers that's like me, dope as fuck, but don't have a presentation, you don't have it. Or either you may come from a background where you have a whole bunch of niggas in your circle that's dope as fuck. Mm -hmm. Y'all not really pushing each other because y'all dope as fuck. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's why I feel like we need like artists fair, artists unions and shit that really push artists, man. Mm -hmm. Money, you know what I'm saying? Like that's right. my whole thing. That's that's why I did the radio station and a radio show to create a platform where artists could be able to make money from their shit. Cause like we could listen to it as a fan, but if I'm not making Calvin money, if I'm not making Neo.com money, or uh, all these dope ass artists money, like how when we run to a J Electronica and them come out West mm -hmm. Side, we run to that shit. But when it comes to our own homies, we can't do that shit. Right. And, and I could say this. I could say this and Thank then I'll be done. Success you. to you. Keep up the great work. Big Booty Care Bears live from the planet Tweet Central. I'm Chicago's wildest Inglewood space cadet by the name of Drunken Monkey. Drunken M-O-N-K with the three E's. The three E's stand for Inglewood Energetic Experience. Find me on Facebook, IG, Twitter. My music is on over 150 streaming music sites. Just make sure you spell my name right. Drunken, M-O-N-K, three E's for music, radio, anime, movies. I got it all, and my shit is dope. It ain't whack. I say that with a humble heart. Yeah, that and that's true, bro. Everything I've heard from him and seen from him has been 100% pure dope, man. So y'all go check him out, man. We out. Peace. Big booty swag. <laughs>